Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over function-based views. So I had the docs pulled over here, and I'll put a link to this in the description, um, but we'll we'll go over some of the examples here to kind of go over what function-based views are and how to use them. And then in future videos, we'll go over the class-based views as well, as well as generic views. But this first video, we're gonna start at the basics with just function-based views. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in our code here, we're in our views.py file, and I'm going to go ahead and add a function view. So to create a view using a function, first we'll just go ahead and create a function, so def, and I'll call this hello world as an example. And I'll pass in request as a parameter. And now instead of here, I can do whatever. So in this case, I'll go ahead and just do a return response. Um, and I'll return... Um, a dictionary with a message key and a value of hello world. Okay, and I'll go ahead and import response as well. So up here at the top, I will import or from um, from rest framework dot response import response. Okay, now if I save this, and now we have a function created and uh, now the last thing to do to make this a a view in Django is we need to add a decorator so a decorator always starts with the at symbol like this and it goes right above the function definition so right above the DEF function name whatever um, right above that where you put decorators and the highest up decorator so we had more than one it would go down here maybe another one down here if you had a third or whatever else but this top one it always needs to be at the top needs to be API underscore view. That is a Django specific thing. Uh, you gotta make sure this is at the very top. And if you're unfamiliar with what decorators are, uh, that's just a, that is a different concept in Python. Uh, you can look it up online, but really we're, it is adding more functionality to this function. And in this case, we're making it a Django REST framework view. Okay, and we can leave it just like this with nothing passed in, um, or we can put a list and then pass in different arguments. So I can put in git, I could put in post if I wanted to. And now this API view will accept get and post methods. So any method you want to accept needs to be inside of this list um, in the decorator. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and test this out. So uh, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go to my music API and go to my urls.py. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a URL here. Uh, we'll get more into URLs in a future video, uh, but, but for now, just type this in, just so we have something that we can test with. So I'll do a path, and I'll put the path to be hello-world with a trailing slash. And then the view here will be views.hello underscore world. And the name will equal just hello uh, world. Okay, and we'll save that. And now to test this out, I'm going to use Insomnia. So I explained this in the last video, um, but all you need to do here is create a new route and put it to to go to HTTP localhost 8000 slash hello dash world. Um, oh, I forgot to import API view. Let's go ahead and make sure everything imported real quick. So up here at the top, I need to go ahead and do a from rest framework or not in the URLs file, though should be in the view file. We'll do a from rest framework dot decorators. So we import our decorators from rest framework dot decorators, then we'll import API underscore view. Okay, let's try this again. Let's check the terminal. Okay, so now back into Insomnia. Uh, you should be able to go to localhost 8000 slash hello dash world and send a get request, and we should get back our message that we passed into the response, hello world, um, which is what we passed in right here. So that, that's really all we need for a really basic API view. Uh, so the steps here, just to go over them one more time, is we create a function, pass in request as an argument, then right above that function, we, had, we add a decorator, so at and then decorator name, in this case it's API underscore view, and then on this decorator we can pass in parentheses and then pass in arguments on the side of, of those parentheses. And, and for our API view, we want one argument, which is this list of allowed methods. In this case, it's get and post. You can return a response, or you can do whatever else you want inside the body of the function, um, and then you have your view. And so in this case, all we did is we just returned a response, a message, and hello world, which when you look at our response here, that's exactly what we're getting, message and hello world. 
So that is all we need for a basic function based view. Now, what you notice here though, is we only set our get requests. We did nothing for our post request. And so we could come up into our insomni here, change this to a post and send that and it'll work okay because we allowed the method. But what if we want different logic inside of our function, if it's a post or if it's a get? Well, we can do that pretty easily using this request keyword we passed in as an argument to our function. So at the top of this function here, I'll, I'll create an if statement. So I'll do if request dot method is equal to post. Then we're gonna do something else. We're gonna go ahead and return a different response just as an example. So we'll go ahead and do return response. And we'll do message. And I'll do got some data uh, because typically you'll send data with a post request. And then if it's not a post request, it will then run this hello world. So now if we save this, we come back here, we run a post and now it says got some data. If we put this to get and hit send and now it says hello world. So now we've handled it inside of our function, uh, what to do if it's a post request or if it's anything else, in this case, a get request. And there's lots of different things on this request here we can use. Uh, for example, if we want to get the post body, so say we're sending maybe like a form or something, we want to get the post body, the form data, whatever it is, uh, we can get that from this request value inside uh, um, our parameters. So let's, let's go ahead and print out the request.body inside of our post request response. So I'll put got some data and I'll add on the end here str to make this a string request.data and just to show what this is I'm going to go ahead and print request.data as well okay now if we come back here and we do a post request to hello world commit send we're getting got some data with nothing inside of there uh, that's because we did not pass in a body we go to our body down here we do a json body and then we go ahead and add some JSON here. We can go ahead and do something like a message. And I'll do something like test message. Now we send this. Now we're getting back message and test message. If you look inside of our terminal, that's exactly what our body is. It's this key value pair here of message and test message. Or in the first case, it was just empty. And so if you were to submit a form or something, you may want to access the, the, the post body. I um, mean, you can do that by just calling request.data like we did here. Uh, request.data will get you that data from the post request. And that is really it for the basics of function views. Um, there's different ways we can customize this more. Uh, for example, if we want to have multiple decorators, uh, we can do so. So for example, um, we'll talk about this more later, but we can add throttles where we limit the amount of requests that can be sent within a certain time period. So let's go ahead and create a class up here um, as an example for this. So we'll go ahead and create a class and we'll call this once per day user throttle. And this will be used to send the request only once a day. Um, and so if they try to send it more than once a day, it will throw an error. This class will inherit from user rate throttle, which we need to go ahead and make sure we import up here at the top. So we'll go ahead and do a from rest framework dot throttling import user rate throttle. Okay. Now inside of this class here, we can go ahead and add one line here, just rate equals one slash day. And this will limit it to once a day. But now somehow we need to go ahead and add this class to our function here because right now this is not attached to this function at all. And we can do that by adding another decorator. So this decorator will go below the API view and it's very important it goes below it. And we'll go ahead and put at and we'll do throttle classes. And then once again, we, inside of here, we can pass in an argument or any arguments. In this case, it'll be one argument with a list of every throttle class we want to add. In this case, it'll be our once per day user throttle that we create right up here. Now let's go ahead and import throttle classes. And this is coming from the same REST framework.decorators import right here. So this will be throttle classes. We'll save that. And now we come back here and we hit send on the request and send again you'll see we get an error saying request was throttled. So we successfully added a second decorator 
and prevented the request being sent more than once by using this throttle classes decorator. Um, so that's just an example of how we can add more. Um, if we want to keep adding more, we keep doing it, and they keep going below this API view decorator. So make sure it goes below that. Um, in the docs here, you'll see it talk about it um, right here. So under the API policy decorators, you'll see down here it says that this must come after or below the API view decorator. Uh, so in this case, they, they created that throttle classes decorator and did that right here, um, what we just did um, as an example. Okay, and that is really it. It's just a really quick video going over function views. Um, in the next video, we're gonna go over more into class views, and after that, we'll probably go into generic views. I um, mean, at that point, hopefully you'll have all the tools you need to build views in Django. So thank you for watching. All the code will be in the description below. I hope you found this useful, and I hope to see you in the next video.